Today, we're gonna to talk about exams. I mean, I'm sorry, finishing. And I wanted to go over my favorite finishes. Now, finishing is something that is subjective, but I have some very strong philosophies that I subscribe to for finishing, and I wanted to go over them. I wanted to talk about my four or five favorite finishes and where I use them and how I do them. Now, there are lots of opinions out there, but I'm coming from a place of somebody who likes to get durable finishes that look gorgeous. Gorgeous is always my number one priority and that get done quickly. When you're doing woodworking projects, nobody wants to spend all this time working on something and then have to wait full days between coats to cure and have something sitting in your shop, you know, curing and leaving a horrible smell and collecting particles from the air that you have to re-sand out. It's just not a good way to finish in my opinion and it leaves so much room for air. I like to do beautiful, durable, and quick in that order. So let's get into all these. I'm gonna show you how I prep for them, apply them, and how I get them complete and out the door. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly go through all the finishes that I like to use and tell you what I like and what application I use them for. I think first and foremost, when I think about finishing, uh, I have a few rules that I live by. One is I don't like gloss. Uh, I think gloss can look very plasticky, semi-gloss and gloss. I try and keep it in the matte and satin areas. Most things that are matte are oils uh, or things that you wipe on. They are penetrating type finishes. Um, when I get into the more satins, we're talking about our lacquers, uh, our water-based polyurethanes. Uh, and then when I do do gloss or semi-gloss is when I get into epoxy finishes, which I would only use on like tabletops or bar tops or places where I need ultra, ultra durability. My number one go-to finish, absolutely number one is because of ease of use and just absolute beauty is shellac. And I like to make my own shellac because I feel like it's much higher quality. Shellac comes from Bugs Saliva, which is such a cool fact. I couldn't tell you which bug or anything, but somebody told me that once, and I hope it's true because it really blows my mind. Um, so you get these shellac flakes, and they're mixed with denatured alcohol. And we'll get into more about how I use it here in a minute, uh, but it comes in different colors. Most used, you know, 99% of the time is the D-Wax Blonde Shellac because it doesn't really change the color uh, of the project too much. Uh, they also have what's called Garnet, which is a much darker one. Looks like this. Uh, and it's really simple finish. It's what's used when someone would say a French polish. That's shellac. It's a very, very old finish. It's something that's been used for thousands of years maybe. Hopefully I'm not over speaking. What I do is I mix it very strong, very equal parts. So one to one, uh, let that dissolve. It usually takes about 24 hours and then I thin it for use. And so, you know, a jar of one to one will last me quite a long time and, and do a lot of projects. And what's great about it is that you can reset. If you put on too much, if it gets wonky, you can just get just pure denatured alcohol, wipe it down, and take off a majority of the finish and just restart over. And that's how a French polish works, is you slowly decrease the amount of shellac that's in there and increase the amount of alcohol and you rub it with a pad and that really buffs out a finish. But it comes at a very nice kind of matte satin finish and it penetrates really well. The other benefit of shellac is it can go over anything and it can go under anything. It's super easy to use. You don't have to worry about mixing. So sometimes I'll use it as my first couple coats and then come over with my finish, whatever I'm using. My next favorite finish is one that I make my own again. Maybe there's a theme here. I like to make my own finishes, but uh, it's what I use for cutting boards and shop jigs. And here is a cutting board. We, Mark and I have put together a long form class. It's a, I believe, nine unit, nine video class on making this cutting board. So it's a few hours of, of instructional content and uh, it is, that is really cool, huh? Um, so what I do is four parts beeswax, which you can just buy on Amazon and I'll link everything I have here down in the pinned comment and the description. But you just get 100% natural beeswax and mineral oil. You do four to one. I heat it in a crock pot or a chafing dish, something that's nice and slow until it's all mixed together. And then you let it cool down and you get this really cool sort of goo. Uh, we call it the Cat's Moses goo. Stop it. And uh, it's amazing because you just wipe it on, let it sit till it completely soaks in, put it on a few more coats on a new cutting board, and you just buff it out. And the finish is like, it's just special. I don't know. I've never had anything that looked and felt this good on a cutting board. Now, it's not durable on like furniture pieces or jewelry boxes, so you couldn't use it there. But with shop furniture, I really like it because I can reapply it anytime and it's got that wax in it. So my tools slide really easily, like, you know, shooting boards, 
uh, you know, different stuff where you're in contact with hand tools, it is really great to have a surface that you know is going to be slick and that nothing else is going to stick to it, like, you know, your errant glue or finish. Uh, this works great. So that is my number one cutting board and jig fixture finish. Also dries really fast, so it's great to use because you can get right to working almost immediately. So the last two are kind of in the same category, water-based polyurethane and lacquer. Both of these have like a recoat time of five minutes. Uh, they dry really fast. I never brush these. I only spray them. Uh, I have a HVLP video, which I will link right here. You can get into HVLP for very cheap. My HVLP gun set was like a hundred bucks. And uh, it's, it's kind of, my, in my opinion, the only way to finish projects. Uh, one, because of the really high atomization, uh, it, anything's gonna dry really fast, but especially these very fast drying finishes. Um, plus, you don't really get overspray. You'll get dust in your shop, but you can really, if you're wearing respirator and goggles, you can spray it inside because uh, it dries before it hits anything else. And, and that's what's great is the really fine mist isn't gonna get anywhere but your project. And so I'll just put down a piece of paper, spray it in the shop, make sure it's well ventilated, dries right away. Lacquer is one of my favorite finishes because it just is beautiful. It lays down so smooth. Uh, it's very easy to reapply. It's very easy to thin uh, and it's very easy to sand. And so I'll use lacquer on any interior uh, kind of decorative pieces I have, uh, jewelry boxes, uh, you know, shelves, that kind of thing that aren't gonna get really, really high use. It's not that strong of a finish. And then when I'm doing things like uh, nightstands, that kind of thing, uh, sometimes I'll use lacquer, but I'll also use water-based poly. Uh, if I need to build sort of a film finish and something that's gonna have drinks set on top of it, I'll go with water-based poly. Now, as you can tell, my jar of semi-gloss is completely unopened and full, and then this is just completely empty. If you get into the glossier stuff on the polyurethanes, it's gonna look really plasticky, but gloss lacquer can look really cool on like really decorative stuff. Like I did that humidor video linked right here. That came out so good because we put gloss finish on it and then buffed it out to a really high shine. Some pieces of furniture just really require that. And that may be your cup of tea too. Maybe you like glossy stuff. My last favorite finish is epoxy. And of course, Total Boat Epoxy, who is a proud supporter of the woodworking community. They, they're not sponsoring this video, but man, do they take care of us woodworkers. So uh, if you're gonna buy any epoxy, make sure you buy Total Boat. The tabletop epoxy is really good because you can pour it pretty thick. And if you like have like a table that's just gonna get beat up or like a bar top, such a good finish. It's self-leveling and it, it really just comes out gorgeous. Uh, and then their epoxies, which you saw me use on my Japanese sharpening station, linked right here, um, they just are a really good finish. They are really tough to use as a finish because you really, it's, you got a brush, which is just a nightmare in my personal opinion, uh, cause you get brush strokes and that kind of thing. So uh, one of the tricks that I'll use on this is I'll use a heat gun after I lay it down and just kind of go, keep going over it and that helps it lay down. But sometimes you have to put it on and then sand it really, really good and then just do a really light top coat and that'll help you get a nice finish on it. Um, but this is what I use in like high water applications and of course to fill imperfections, cracks, uh, things in projects. I wouldn't use anything other than Total Boat. So uh, let's get into how to apply them and uh, how to make them look good. Now I'm gonna assume that everybody sands their, their boards up to 180 or 240, up to you. Uh, sometimes I'll go by with 400 and just give it a quick little hand sanding to knock down any rough spots, but I do not raise the grain on projects. I know people always say, you should raise the grain. I disagree fully, and here's the reason. Your finish is gonna raise the grain. You're gonna sand in between coats. And so why raise it twice? And why add water to a project that is going to potentially warp boards or change the shape of something when it dries? So I don't do that. Uh, I raise the grain with the finish and then I'll sand in between. I'll do two coats, almost always, two coats, do a sanding with 400, one final coat. And that's all I ever need. So the way that shellac works is I'll have my DWAC shellac flakes I'll add them in a jar, do one-to-one -one with denatured alcohol, which you can get at any hardware store or on even on Amazon, it's great. And then I'll let that dissolve about 24 hours. And then what I'll do is I'll take this one-to-one -one finish and I'll go about one-to-four for my first coat, 
one to four for my second coat, and then go one to eight for my final coat. And there's a great video by Mike Pekovich from Fine Woodworking. He kind of wrote the Bible on using this is where I learned. I'll link that down below. Um, and it's just, what's great about this is it dries in like a minute or two. You can recoat it, you can buff it out. There's lots of ways to use this, or you can use it as sort of like a primer for, for finish. So I'm just gonna add this in here. And a great way to store your rags is in your jar of one-to-one -one, so you don't have to keep using rags. Uh, shellac is not one of those finishes you have to worry about laying out your rags uh, like you would in oil base. So you don't have to worry about burning down your shop. And we already know it's one-to-one, -one, so I'm just gonna add a few parts here and make it about one to four. And we're just gonna dunk our rag. You can literally just wipe it on, it's so easy. I'm just gonna give it a coat. And the great thing is it's self-wetting, so uh, if you get like a big glob that dries as kind of a bubble, you can just sort of buff it out like this and get it on there. So I'll just get, just wipe it down a few times. You can tell it's dry when there's no more like sheen to it when you look at it from the side. And then we're just gonna go ahead and do another coat here. And this one won't be as aggressive. We don't wanna just completely flood the surface here because then it'll just mean more work for us down the road when we're buffing it out. But we're just gonna get it wet again, wipe it down. Let it dry, super easy. Okay, and that's already dry. I mean, that was legitimately, we turned the camera off and turned it back on 15 seconds later. And then I'm just gonna give it a very light sort of scuff sanding. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more denatured alcohol to my mix here. Give that a dunk, and then just give it one more nice coat. And you don't wanna keep rubbing. If it starts to tack up, just back off. And you can always come back and fix it once it starts to tack. All right, so now you could call that done. It's beautiful, nice matte finish. It looks like an oil finish, not a film finish. Or sometimes I'll go one more coat and I'll, I'll dip my rag in and, and just wring it out really, really good. Just really, really good. And then I'll just give the surface a light buffing. And this will help kind of blend in any inconsistencies and just that's it and back off. And then we'll let that dry and that's good to go. See, look, that's already about dry. You can see kind of as the shine goes away, it dries so fast. Okay, our next finish is the KM Goo, which is the four to one mineral oil and beeswax. So it's four parts beeswax to mineral oil, heated in a chafing dish until it's all melted and mixed together and then let it dry. And it creates this like just waxy goo that is just incredible. And it doesn't get easier than this. What's great about it is you can reapply and reapply and reapply. And that's why this is so good for cutting boards. If you are somebody who is making cutting boards and selling them at craft shows and Etsy, I would make up a huge batch of this and put it in little containers and give it to your customers so that it has your contact info on it. So that way, you know, four months down the road when they've washed it 20 times and they're like, oh, this doesn't look like it used to, they can contact you say, oh yeah, just rub that on, tell them how to use it. it gives you another chance to interact with your customers. But this stuff's super easy. Just slop it on, rub it in, and you just let it sit and let it sit till it seems like it's just not absorbing anymore. You can just leave it on there and you know, I already did this board recently. So once you've let it sit for a while and let the mineral oil really get in there, all you wanna do is using the same cloth, just keep buffing it. Keep buffing it until you remove kind of any extra and then you just let that wax harden up. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how I put on lacquer and water-based poly. There is no difference between this process, so I'm just gonna show you lacquer with the spray can. I highly suggest you get into HVLP. Again, that video is linked, and if you click that little eye in this corner right here, the top right-hand corner as you're looking at the screen, it will have that HVLP video. Take a look at it. It makes a difference. It really makes a difference. It's a small investment to get a much bigger difference in your woodworking to get into the HVLP stuff. Highly recommend. So the way that I do this, this is sanded up to 220 and I just put on my respirator. Now what's great about lacquer, which is a little different than polyurethane, is lacquer is self-wetting. So it's gonna re-wet itself every time to adhere to the coat before it. And so this one, you only need to sand once in between coats. Whereas with polyurethane, the only difference is you need to sand between every coat. And remember, it's gonna raise the grain the first time. So just put on a thin coat, sand down that grain, and then keep going. But I do three coats of each. Uh, when I do them, I'll do, with lacquer, I do two coats, sand, and then do a final coat with water-based polyurethane. I sand between every coat. 
You want to make sure your last coat is your lightest coat. You don't want to flood the surface on your last coat. It's basically just to fill those scratch marks that you left from sanding between coats. So I'm going to put on my respirator and show you how I do this. The important thing is you want to overlap by half. So each pass, you overlap by half and keep going that way. And that'll ensure that your coat is a nice solid coat. So now you can see that's laid down perfectly. You can tell it's not tacky. It's starting to build a little bit of a sheen there. So we're just gonna give it one more coat, a sanding, and then a final coat. Okay, now we're done. We got a nice satin finish. It's nice and smooth. It's, it feels very, very smooth to the touch. There's a couple dings in here. This was just a piece of scrap wood, so I didn't spend a ton of time sanding it. Those wouldn't be in a normal project, but um, it just is a great looking finish, both water-based satin and lacquer satin. are some of my favorite finishes for heavy use furniture. So. Um, one thing I think I forgot to mention was that if you're going to use an oil finish, which is another kind of finish I really like, you know, like any kind of teak oil, Danish oil, you would just wipe it on kind of like the shellac. Uh, it's really, really easy finish to use. I don't use it very often just because it doesn't really offer any protection whatsoever, but it really is beautiful. And it's what some of the real famous older furniture makers would use. Like if you look up Maloof oil, there's a mixture that is really, really good. Um, I think Maker Brand uh, Simple Finish is sort of a variation of that with hardening wax, but there's lots of great oil finishes if that's what you're into. Uh, guys, best way to support the channel is head over to the Cat's Moses store, pick up a t-shirt, dovetail jig, or a stop block. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe in the shop, and we'll see you on the next one.